fill this place again with your song. Flood our thoughts with wonder and awe. Give us a greater glimpse of a never changing God. Sing it out together. Though we want and though we need is found in you, is found in you, Jesus, every victory is found in you, is found in you. Ooh, 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 ooh,
Thank God that we have this time together. Welcome to those of you who maybe just joined us. We just thank God that we can enter into worship no matter where we are. We know God has something special in store for you today. So I just want to remind you that if you have any prayer requests, please send it to the number that you see on the screen or to the email address that is on there. We're praying for you. We're going to be praying for you. We, have, we are believing that God is able to bring the answers that you need. But you, by faith, have to act. And in sending that, you're acting in faith and God will undertake. Amen. So we're so glad for that. God bless every one of you. And no matter where you're joining us from, we're so glad that we can come together. And to our Good News Center family, we welcome you. God bless you. Amen. Let me get straight into Maybe a little bit of preaching, teaching, if you want to call it, tonight before we go into prayer, because I'm going to share the Word of God, take some time to pray, and then we have some specific points that we're going to be praying with for, praying with tonight. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray for a moment. Jesus, as we come before you, we come as your servants, and Lord, I know that you know every need you know every single one that is watching or listening you know those of us who are here you know all that is going on in our life I pray today as we open our heart and open our ears and open our mind that we would receive from you Jesus we thank you we bless you we love you. We adore you. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you'd have full control of everything in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. And of course, another in my series of questions that I'm asking, and I hope you, I'll hope you answer with me. Today, it's, what do you need? What do you need? And I put it right there, ask Jesus. Whatever you need, ask Jesus. Because Jesus is able to help. And I want to read our scripture for today firstly. It's from Mark chapter 10 verse 46 to 52. It says, And now they came to Jericho as he went out of Jericho with his disciples, a great multitude, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the road begging. And when he had heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then many warned him to be quiet, but he cried out all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. <coughs> Excuse me. Then they called the blind man saying to him, be of good cheer, rise, he is calling you. And throwing aside his garment, he rose and came to Jesus. So Jesus answered and said to him, what do you want me to do for you? The blind man said to him, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way, your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus on the road. We thank God for his word. And you know, just a quick, we, we read it and if, you're not, if you were not listening 
completely. Just a quick synopsis here. Jesus is leaving Jericho. And as he leaves Jericho, there's a man sitting by the roadside. His name is Bartimaeus. He's blind. He's begging by the roadside. The Bible says when he heard that it was Jesus going by, he cried out to Jesus. He called out to Jesus. The Bible says, and when he heard that Jesus was passing by, he cried out to Jesus. The people tried to stop him. The people tried to hinder him from crying out. In fact, nobody and nothing could stop him. He cried out even more, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus stopped and said, bring that man to me. And the, the people who were trying to silence him said, oh, go ahead. He wants you. He's calling you. Then he comes to Jesus. The Bible says he arose and came to Jesus. And Jesus asked him again, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? That's why my question today is, what do you need? What do you need Jesus to do for you today? Ask him. And he will undertake. Ask him and he will bring it to pass. Ask him and he will take care of it. Bartimaeus knew that if I asked Jesus, he will take care of it. And he said, Rabboni, that I might receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. And immediately he received his sight and immediately he followed Jesus on the way. You see, the first thing is, there are a few questions. The first thing that I want to say to you is this, that you need to know what you have need of. You need to know what you need. How's that for you? You must know what you need. You need to know what you need. But to me, it's for him, it was clear that I might receive my sight. And so in the knowledge of I need Jesus to do something for me, you have to be sure. See, Bartimaeus, who's blind, didn't ask for something else. He realized right at this point, all I need is my sight. He didn't say, Jesus, I need you to give me some money. He didn't say, Jesus, I need you to help me take, help me go someplace. He said, I might receive my sight Knowing that if I took care of that, everything else will be taken care of. So Bartimaeus was clear, and I'm going to ask you today, what do you need? What do you need God to do in your life? What is that one thing that you need God to take care of that will settle all the issues that you are dealing with, all the problems that you are dealing with? And see, Bartimaeus comes and he says, Firstly, he says that I might receive my sight. Secondly, he said, show me your mercy. I need your mercy. And in this, you look at, in the manner in which he cries out. He says to Jesus, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You have to understand, Bartimaeus' name says something about Bartimaeus. Yeah, it says son of Timaeus, but that word Timaeus means one that is unclean, one that is impure, and because he's maimed, because he's blind, he's considered unclean, he's considered impure. So can you imagine, that means he can't enter into the place where everybody else is worshipping like everybody else. Show me mercy. He knew he needed something to happen. He was a blind beggar unclean and impure. He needed his status to be restored, that I might receive my sight and that I may be able to be restored, to be able to worship the Lord the way I should, that I may be able to come and be in public. See, these are the specific things that Bartimaeus realized. I need this. Now, here's an important thing. When he said, have mercy on me, unlike the attitude in which he came to the Lord, he knew what he needed, but he knew also how to come. He humbled himself. See, it wasn't a case of entitlement, a sense of entitlement that you need to do this for me. I deserve that this be done to me. And you know, sometimes when we come to Jesus, it's like we're almost placing these demands on Jesus that Jesus, you just have to do it. It doesn't work that way. But a humble, the Bible speaks about a broken and a contrite spirit. 
When we are in need, it means we're lacking something. We need to come with a humbled heart before the Lord. We don't come with a grumbled heart, but we come with a humbled heart. And we cry out to the Lord, knowing I, I, I am in need. I have a need. I'm coming to the one who can meet my need. And when you come to Jesus, you must come knowing that he'll be able to meet your need. Therefore, you ought to humble yourself. We come humbly before him. See, the second thing is you must know who will help you. And so Bartimaeus, who has been by that place, that gate, for many years, many people walking by, the crowds walking up and down, in and out of the city of Jericho, not once does the Bible record that he cried out to anyone else to help him in that fashion. In previous times, maybe, he put his hands out for them to give him something. Can you give me something to take care of my needs? Can you give me some food? Can you give me some money? That's what he did to others. But when Jesus came, the Bible says he heard that it was Jesus. And see, you have to know who can help you. And I want to remind you and me today and us who are here, only Jesus can help us out of any situation. Jesus is the Savior. See, Bartimaeus knew that Jesus could do this because the Bible says he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. And so he cried out, Jesus, Savior, Son of David. In other words, Son of the Eternal King. This is the Eternal King and Ruler and Master of all. Not just David, but the Eternal One. Because when you speak about David, you're talking about an everlasting kingdom. And they all understood that. So when he's referring to Jesus, he's referring to Jesus as the king. He knows that this king, he knows that he has the answer. He is the one with the power and the authority. If you don't acknowledge that Jesus can do it, you are wasting your time coming to him. We must acknowledge, Jesus, you are Savior. And I want to tell you, nobody else has declared themselves as Savior like Jesus. Because he saves us out of all our troubles and situations. And he is eternal. Bartimaeus said it. You are Jesus, the son of David, the savior, the eternal king, the eternal master, the eternal ruler of all. One with power and authority. Faith. See, Bartimaeus was acting in faith in Jesus. When Bartimaeus did this, the Bible says, the great crowd that was there began to silence him. So the third thing that you also have to recognize, you have to know your adversary. You have to know who your enemy is. You have to acknowledge. See, if you come out blaming God for what your condition is, and you come out blaming Jesus even, then how can you expect Jesus to help you? You have to know who the adversary is. So in this, look at this. These people that were there were taking care of Bartimaeus' food for the day, but were not curing him of the situation that he had. And they began to silence him. And they said to him, Bartimaeus, stop crying out to this Jesus. Stop crying out to the son of David. Be silent. And I'm sure they must have made great threats. If you keep on crying this way, we will not give you any money anymore. We will not help you anymore. So you better keep quiet. But the Bible says he, instead of keeping quiet, he spoke a little louder. See, the voices of opposition will always come to obstruct you of your miracle. Satan will use voices. So you must recognize that there is an enemy, Satan himself, whom we speak about Satan, the adversary, the devil himself. 
the adversary. That means he's always going to oppose you. He's the one responsible for the bad conditions that we are in. He's the one responsible for the sickness, the disease, the, all the financial problems and all of that. Yes, I know that we may have made some mistakes, but ultimately he is the one who is the root for all of these things in the world. He's, one, he's the one responsible for the brokenness of this world. He's the one responsible for the trouble that we are in this world. Jesus said it like this in John 10.10. 10, the thief, that's the devil, comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But he said, I, Jesus, have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. That's quite the opposite. The devil comes to steal. The adversary comes to steal. The one who is opposing wants to take away, to stop, to hinder what you're supposed to have. And there's Jesus who is presenting himself. I have come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So I ask you, what do you need today? Ask Jesus. Ask Jesus. See, they thought by their support, they can control his behavior. They can control his actions. Bartimaeus came to a conclusion. It's Jesus. See, Bartimaeus knew what to do. This, the fourth thing is you must know what to do. In this circumstance, what Bartimaeus did was this. He heard that Jesus was doing all these amazing things. See, you can hear something and it's not enough. But he heard and he listened because faith entered into his heart that if Jesus could do it for that guy and that boy and that woman and that lady and if Jesus could do it in that city and if he healed that one and he delivered that one and he raised that one, Bartimaeus heard all these things. See, hearing it is not enough because you can hear it and some say you hear it, it goes into one ear and comes out the other because nothing in between to stop it. Nothing in between to grab it. But see, faith in him grabbed what he heard that Jesus, the son of David, has the power and the authority because he is the eternal king to do all things. I know that he is able to help me. So when he heard that it was Jesus passing by, he found himself in a place of opportunity that Jesus would do it. And when faith entered into his heart, he began to cry out aloud. And sometimes the Faith must not just be in your heart. The expression of your voice tells about the faith that you have. Unashamed, unafraid. They silenced him. Remember they said, be quiet. The Bible says, instead, he began to cry out even louder. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. The next thing that he did you think of all the different actions that happen in here. So remember, Jesus stops and he says, bring this man to me. I am reading this text and I've probably read it several times. And I want to see, there's a view that I see in verse 50. And when he called him, in verse 50 it says, and he threw his garment, that's one, the beggarly garment or the garments for begging because that garment said he was a beggar. In other words, that was his certificate for begging. That was his qualifications for begging. That beggarly coat that they normally wore. He took it off saying, I don't need this anymore. That's the first thing. Then the Bible says, he arose. He arose. Now, I know Jesus said, bring him to me. But here it says, he arose and came to Jesus. Maybe he followed Jesus' voice. I, I, I don't know. May, this, this is subject to opinion. The Bible says he told them to bring him. But there's no record that they brought him. It says he arose. He took off his garment. And he came to Jesus. You see, this is what, you cannot depend on somebody else. You cannot depend on others to bring you. You need to take that step. Bartimaeus took that step. You need to know what you need to do. Only you know your need and only you know who will help you and only you know what you need to do to change the circumstance. For Bartimaeus, he arose, 
took off the garment saying, I am not going to be this way again because I am coming to Jesus. And when you ask Jesus, you know that he's going to take care that you don't have to go back. So Bartimaeus threw that coat off, rose up and came to Jesus. For me, following the voice of Jesus, hearing the sound of Jesus' voice, he went in that direction. I don't have any evidence to claim that, but it's just my opinion. Because that's what the scripture says. And throwing, verse 50, and throwing aside his garment, he arose and came to Jesus. It doesn't say somebody helped him. It just says, for me, the voice of Jesus. And today, maybe you're hearing Jesus speaking to you and saying, come, I can help you. Maybe you're hearing Jesus' voice. I know you're listening to me right now, but I speak as a servant of the Lord, and I'm saying to you, what do you need? I'm asking you, what do you need? Come to Jesus. Take the steps of faith like the way Bartimaeus did. He was directed by the voice or the sound of Jesus' voice. He f- and then this, the, the end tells me something as well. After Jesus pronouncing his healing and saying that he is made well, the Bible says he immediately followed Jesus. In spite of the fact that Jesus told him, go your way. He made a decision. Upon receiving his healing, he will follow Jesus. See, all these things are very important to maintain what God has given, to maintain what Jesus has done. I conclude with this here. Bartimaeus crying out calls Jesus among the multitudes, it says, his apostles or the disciples, verse 46, and he, as he went out of Jericho with the disciples and a great multitude, all of that, it's, it's another occasion when Bartimaeus cries out, Jesus stops immediately. Jesus, verse 49, it says, And Jesus stood still and said, Come. Jesus stood still and said, Come to me. Bring him to me. You see, when you step out in faith, when you, you, firstly, you know what you need. Secondly, you know who can help you. And thirdly, you know what to do in this Listen, Jesus responds and immediately he stands still and he brings him. See, Jesus is moved with compassion by the needs of the people. But it's not enough. Jesus moves into action when we act in faith. Let me repeat that. Jesus is moved with compassion by the needs of the people. But however, Jesus is moved into action when we move in faith. Bartimaeus moved in faith. Bartimaeus knew what he needed. Bartimaeus knew who his enemy was. Bartimaeus knew who could help him. Bartimaeus knew how to get to the master. I ask you again today, what do you need? What do you need to be done in your life? Ask Jesus, because he can do it. Take the right steps. Jesus said to Bartimaeus, your faith has made you whole. Everything that Bartimaeus did was in faith. He cried out in faith. He arose in faith. He threw away his garments in faith. He came to Jesus in faith. And he asked in faith. Because Jesus asked, what must I do for you? And he said, simply, that I might receive my sight. Clearly, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stops and Jesus undertakes. Now I ask you finally, what do you need Jesus to do? It's it's, it's not about whether Jesus can. Jesus is able. It's whether you are willing to ask him. Whether you're willing to put your trust in him. I know that he's able to do it. I know what Jesus is able to do. For you today. I want us to pray tonight. And I don't know where you are. I don't know what your situation is. But I'm saying again. And as I ask that question. What do you need? Jesus can fix it. What do you need? Ask Jesus. Come to him in faith. Come to him. It's so simple. 
Come to him in faith. And tonight we're going to pray. And I'm going to pray with you the prayer of faith. I know that Jesus is able to do it. Listen, I have nothing to do with it except to have faith in Jesus for you. Because it's not me, it's him. And as you put your faith and put your trust, he's able to do it. If you're in your homes or wherever you are, won't you just lift your hands or stand or whatever it is, or just whatever you need to do, respond in faith, cry out to him. He's able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to ask you, you think Jesus didn't see Bartimaeus at the roadside when he walked past him? He probably did. But until, until Bartimaeus cried out, until Bartimaeus called out, he would not have got his help. And as you call out today, Jesus, Jesus is doing something. Hallelujah. Let's begin to pray. Father, we come to you in Jesus. Jesus, you know the needs of every single one. Hallelujah. Shibro semenindi lebro shendi. You know the burdens that they carry, Lord. Your word says you have compassion. And we know that you're waiting to do for your children who will cry out. I pray that as they cry out in faith, Lord, as they recognize that it is you, it is you, it is you, Jesus, that can change the circumstance. I pray now let them receive that answer in the name that is above every other name, the name Jesus. I thank you for the healing. Thank you for touching them, removing the tears, Lord, removing the pain, removing, oh God, all that hurt in the name of Jesus. Lord, in faith I speak. And I say, as your word says, the Lord rebuke you, Satan. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke every demonic stronghold that has kept people in bondage and blindness. And Lord, I, by faith, I pray this prayer of faith for a release of healing and deliverance and provision and breakthrough in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And we give you the glory. We give you the glory and thank you for what you have done. Thank you for what you are doing. We magnify your holy name. We magnify your name, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Listen, if you have prayer, if you still have prayer requests, request, go ahead and send it to the number that you see on the screen or to that email address, and we'll be praying for you. Also, let us know what God has done. Share with us the testimonies. Share the page, like the page, subscribe to the channel, whatever you need to do, because our heart is that people would receive this word and be changed. Amen. We're going to continue in prayer. And for believers, wherever you are, join us in this time, because you know in this age, in this moment of time in our lives, we really need to pray because there's so much happening. And we put aside some points for prayer. And we're going to call our, uh, our team to pray, Pastor Spiso and Norma and Jadale to lead us, to help us as we pray. And, and the specific points of prayer today, it's called a fatso prayer. A fatso prayer. That means we're praying for the body of Christ to be faithful, available, teachable, submissive, and open to the Holy Spirit. Amen. So get ready as we take time to pray. And if you ever need the prayer points, please let us know. Pastor Safisa, won't you lead us in prayer at this point in time? God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Honor. Amen. Thank you so much, Bishop. I think the first one we have to pray for, it's being faithful. Amen. And I'm here today and 
uh, my wife and I will be praying. Amen. I hope you are joining us at home. Hallelujah. This is a wonderful time where we can come together and pray. Amen. Somebody might be saying, why we always pray all the time? Because there is problems all the times. So we have to pray all the times. Amen. So the first one will be faithful. Let's take it to Matthew 25 from verse number 21. This is a parable. You know, the Lord loves to tell parables. Amen. Because he knows that we love stories. Uh, whether you believe the parable or not, it doesn't matter. But I think at the end of the day, the Lord wants to portray a message. There's a message in a parable. Whether you believe it or not. But take this lesson. The Bible says in Matthew 25 from verse number 21, it says, The master said to, his, to this servant, you can read it at home so you can get the whole story. You are a good servant and you have done really well. You were careful with a small amount of money. Now I will give you authority over many more things. I am really happy about this and I want you to be happy with me. Hallelujah. Notice this. I am really happy. The Lord is happy and he says about this and I want you to be happy. Why? Because the servant was faithful with the little that the master gave him. He's just giving us a task. Amen? And he's only asking us to be faithful. Why? Because when he's giving us a task, there is time involved, there are talents involved, and there's also treasure and tithes. Those four things. And tonight or in the morning or afternoon, join us even as we pray that we're going to give because it's not the master, but it's us who have to give time, our talents, our treasure, and our tithes. Amen? Hallelujah. Can we begin to pray in Jesus' name? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the praise. You are the master and you have given us a task. Your word declares that you have given a servant a little task just to manage it and look after it. And your word declares Master. that he did so and you were happy with him. And we pray in the name of Jesus that even as we give our time, we give our talents, we give our treasure, we give our tithes and being faithful as a steward, you have called us. And we ask you in a name that is above every other names, that we are going to be faithful with that you have given to us. In the name of Jesus, you have given us time, Heavenly Father, and we rejoice we enjoy such a wonderful time, but we don't forget what it is, what is this time for. It is for us to be responsible in the name of Jesus. It is for us to be accountable in the name of Jesus as a good steward. Help us in the name of Jesus. Help us with the power that is endured in us with the Holy Spirit. We thank you even as we give our talents to the ministry. We thank you even as we give our tithes to the ministry in the name of Jesus. We give you all the praise, Master. Take your glory in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Good evening at home. Welcome. Amen. We are still praying. Hallelujah. We are praying for the church to be available. Amen. In worship and in service. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. In worship, to worship God, a mighty God. He alone is worthy to be praised. Amen. Um, the availability of us, it's for us to be able to be used. Amen. We have to be accessible and unoccupied. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray according to Matthew 4, uh, verse 10. It says, Jesus said to him, Go away, Satan, for it is written and forever remain written. You shall worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Amen. And Psalms 150, verse 6 says, Let everything that has breath Thank praise you, the Lord. Worship. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Thank we give you, you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you, Lord. Baba wetu moshe epsugu sizago we si atoba. Si aleta umzimbaga Kristo. Si aleta ibanda. Inge guzako oibizile abazalwa ne kulunkulu etongwele abaholwa yo abantu ba bizile kulunkulu si atanda zepsugu guti ba tembeke si atanda zankulunkulu etongwele uguti ba 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 zuguti nguwe wetu ofanelo tuni iswa nguwe wetu angose na manda ofanelo utu mo si atanda zankose uguti ngaso song kiskati mabetinga gala babe kona kulunkulu nguwele kunga bi kona izinto e izba vimba yendeleni kunga bi kona izinto kulunkulu etongwele zostega meza ke pankosi si kumbulu kuti wena wetu ufanelo utu ma wena wetu usbizile jengo gusho kwe zilu wako kumate unkulu unkulu ngwele ugutu jesu kresto himself uye na wachelu satan uguti nka kumele kutunyiswe unkulu unkulu kupela kulu unkulu ngwele si atandaza fo umzimbaga kresto umshaba wongu uguti unkulu unkulu na mandla si tumisa wena wetu sibe kona njalo mangabe ustinga Ukdumisa, nanga kokonke kose ngwelo funa sikwenze nango seventhly nga Jehova siyabonga nkulunkulu ukuthi konke sikwenza ngokuthembeka egameni lika Jesu Kristo wase Nazareth haleluya thank you jesus Amen. and uh first corinthians verse 4 and um chapter 4 verse 2 <laughs> it says this is how you should think about us who are leaders in the church we are Christ's servants. Mm. God has also given us a special job to us. We must explain his message to people so that they understand it. Verse 2 says, Anyone who has the, that kind of job must do what his master wants. That is the most important thing. Amen. Amen. Jadel, can you please come over? Thank you. In Jesus' name. Jesus, hallelujah. Psalms 1, <clears throat> verse 1 to 2. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Tonight, as we pray, we're going to pray for a teachable spirit according to the word of God and according to the spiritual leaders that he has appointed. We're going to pray over that from to our congregation, to our family, to our friends today, that in learning to be teachable, one must first understand what it means to be humble. But Jesus was an incredible teacher because the disciples didn't submit to him because they were afraid of him. They didn't submit to him because, uh, well, he basically uses forceful power on them. No, 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 no. Jesus, in his nature and his character, was love. And the disciples submitted to him in seeing the act of love and power at the same time. That is the greatest power that we could ever see. And that is the power that compels any man or woman to listen to, a, well, to someone. So today, in having a teachable spirit, let's pray that as we have a humble and an open heart to God's chosen leaders, that we will not have any sort of room of doubt, any sort of room of, uh, uh, how do we say this, causing, um, sorry, no? rebelliousness, yes, because we know the opposite of being teachable is rebelliousness. And so, let's pray that today in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for a teachable spirit. 
Lord, reveal to us, reveal to your people, reveal to your sons and daughters, Lord, if they do or do not have it, Lord, so that they may receive more, receive more, Jesus. Lord, you, you taught us so much, but we got in the way of receiving the teaching because of our pride or maybe because of our confusion or maybe because we simply didn't, well, we didn't choose to really listen. And sometimes faith requires us to go into a dark room and to be obedient to the light, to be obedient to the direction you give to us. We may not see the light at the end of the tunnel yet, but you told us to go forward and so thus we will, Lord, in being obedient to the things that you want us to be obedient to, Lord. We thank you, God, that we will not choose to be rebellious to those that you have put in charge over us, those that you have not put us well, those that you not put over us that use power or force or any sort of aggression to make us submit, but in love, in example, in, in character, Jesus. So we thank you for a teachable spirit. We eradicate any sort of rebellion because we know that Satan, that was the first thing he did, Lord. And because of that, man, he went the opposite way, Lord, because Jesus... God, you do not like a spirit of rebellion because it, 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 it cuts the line of life. It cuts the flow of growth. It cuts the, the, the maturity level to increase. It, it, just, it just pauses. It delays the victory, the life, the goodness of things to go. You especially, Lord. It, it delays what you want, Lord. And we thank you for a teachable spirit. Oh, Father. Correct us, Lord. Show us, Lord, where, what areas of our life we need to be, what, what areas of our life we need to be more open in, Lord. Whether it's in our marriage, whether it's in our personal growth, whether it's in our faith, whether it's in the, our emotions, Jesus. Whether it's in knowledge, whatever the area, Lord, let us have a teachable spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Lord, thank you for the victory. Thank you today in Jesus' name. Dad, you can close up. There you come. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. James 4, verse 7. So, obey God's authority. Be strong against the devil, and yes. he will run away from you. Amen. Man. We are praying for the church to be submissive. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. And we're going to read Romans 13, uh, verse 1 and 2 and 7. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, it goes like this. Everyone must obey the authority of mm -hmm. government. Yes. It is God who gives authority to rule. Mm -hmm. The people who rule have received their authority from God. Amen. Amen. So anyone who refuses to obey that authority is refusing to obey God. That person will receive the proper punishment. Yep. And verse 7 says, So you must give to each person what you ought to give them. Pay taxes to the people who receive taxes. Yeah. Do that for every kind of tax. Respect those people that you should respect. Mm. Praise people that you should praise. Amen. Amen. We are praying for uh, submission, submission to authority, to God, to spiritual leadership, and yes. to men. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Baba we tomohle ungunkulunkulo ngcwele. Izwe lakho uNkulunkulu liyasiyala liyasikhombisa ukuthi sihambe kanjani endleleni. Kulunkulu namandla ebusuku siyathandaza for ibandla umzimba ka Kristo as a whole ukuthi uNkulunkulu namandla sikwazi ukuthi sibe submissive uNkulunkulu namandla sikhuleke siyakhulekela ukuthi inkosi sikwazi ukuthobela uHulumeni sikwazi ukuthobela abaholi obabekile ngaphambi kwethu sikwazi ukuthobela uNkulunkulu ongcwele abasiholayo kwezikamoya sikwazi 
ukuthobela ngose namandla amadodo wabekile emhlabeni sikwazi inkulunkulu ngcwele ukuthoba ngegama lika Jesu Kristo wasenazareth baba wethu ongcwele kakhulu kazi sithandazela ukuthobela wena ngoba nguwe wedwa inkulunkulu ophakeme siyathandaza babe ebusuku ukuthi ibandla lika Kristo likhumbule ukuthi babuthewe nezwini lakho masizithobe ebusweni boka inkulunkulu wena uyakusiphakamisa inkulunkulu ongcwele siyabonga ebusuku ukusikhumbuza nangezwi lakho siyathandaza ebusuku ukuthi baba wethu ongcwele we will submit to the authority of God Amen lika Jesu Kristo wase Nazareth we thank you Lord we give you praise glory and honor Amen thank you Jesus Amen Hallelujah We are still praying thank you We are praying that the moving of the Holy Spirit so this falls under a subheading be open I need to be open you need to be open Amen If you are the follower of Christ, a steward of the Lord, first you must be faithful, available, be teachable, be submissive, and be open. Be open to who? Be open to the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. If you are at home, you can read Ephesians chapter 5 from verse number 18. It talks about the gift and the fruit of the Spirit. You can also go to Ephesians chapter 4 from verse number 30. It says don't grieve the Holy Spirit. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verse number 19, do not quench. In Ephesians 4:30 it says do not grieve. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 it says do not quench, do not put him off. Amen. Do not grieve him. Do not live as if as if he does not exist. Hallelujah. Be aware, be alert. Hallelujah. So let us pray that even we are going to be open to the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful time. We are being open because it's the only way we can receive from you your word declares that he comes from you the lord the holy spirit so when our master ascended to heavens he said i will ask the father to give you another one like me so he can be with you all the time and he will tell you everything that the father has told him heavenly father we acknowledge this wonderful gift that you have sent to us yes. we realize that we are nothing without the holy spirit we realize that there is no church without the holy spirit we realize that we cannot be transformed without the holy spirit so right now we open our minds we open our senses to him and we ask in the name of jesus to help us to be open to be open minded to the teachings to be teachable to be faithful to be submissive not only to ourselves but to be submissive to you, you Jesus. as the god in heaven Hallelujah. to be submissive to you as lord and our savior you, to be submissive to those that you have ordained to take care of our souls here on earth and to be submissive to the authorities that you have put in the name of Jesus thank you, we Jesus. thank you master we give you all the praise we pray heavenly father that we will not grieve the holy spirit we pray father that you help us not to quench him not to yes. put him out we invite him and we ask in the name of Jesus that even as we have fellowship with Thank you holy you, spirit fill us in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we thank you we give you all the praise as a church thank as a local you, church as an individual that we are going to pay attention to the teachings and be submissive and be faithful into the things of god 
We thank, thank you, you Father. Jesus. We give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Bishop, Hallelujah. over to you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank the Lord even for this, this time of prayer. And we have some general prayer points that we're going to pray. And the first one is we are praying for the presidents, the rulers, and their governments. Think of people that are in leadership positions around the world. Romans 13 says that we must submit to authority. In, in Timothy, Paul is speaking and he says, pray for those who are in authority. So in more than just submit, but we have to pray. So we're going to pray today. So Father, as we come to you in the name of Jesus, as, the, as believers, as children of the Most High God, we come asking you right now for our presidents, for the rulers, oh God, of our governments, Lord, leaders in every part of the world, and more specifically here for our president, President Cyril Ramaphosa here in South Africa. Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus for wisdom. We pray for direction. We pray for them, their families. We pray, Lord, for all those leaders. Leaders, oh God, that they will walk and live and serve righteously. We pray they will be in a position to take advice that is godly by those that you place there, Lord. We pray this today in Jesus' name. Lord, even as we pray for the persecuted church today, we realize, oh God, how much the enemy is attacked. We realize, oh God, this is not something new because we, you even promised that there would be persecution, Lord Jesus. And we see what is happening. And we pray, Father, for the persecuted church in Africa. We pray, Father, for the persecuted church in Asia. We pray for the persecuted church in the Middle East. And these are our concentrations today. And ask that you would give them courage to stand up, Lord, thinking of Paul and Barnabas even at the midnight hour in jail persecuted, beaten, but still praising. So I pray, Lord, in spite of the persecution, that they will still remain in prayer and praise. I pray, Father, for the courage. I pray for boldness. I pray they will continue to preach the gospel. I pray, Lord, for the resources that they need to continue the strength. <coughs> I pray that they will have no fear, not be intimidated, but still stand confessing, proclaiming, believing that Jesus is Lord and Savior. We pray even for the persecutors, Lord, that their hearts will change. You change Paul's heart. The, one of the greatest persecutors that ever that, that existed that we know of in the Bible. But you changed his heart. He had a transformation because of his encounter with you. I pray let those who are persecuting the church today have an encounter like the one Paul had and change their lives towards you in Jesus' name. Lord, you instructed us to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Lord, we realize, oh God, when we're praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we're praying for Israel. Lord, we're praying, oh God, especially knowing all the stuff that is happening, oh God, we pray for them and we pray that they, the nation of Israel, will come to know you as Lord and Savior and they will accept you as Messiah. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, even that you'd open their hearts to receive Jesus, the Messiah of the world. I pray, Father, even for for their protection. I pray, Lord, that, that all these wars that are going on will cease and there will be a place of revival in this nation. We pray and speak blessing over them in Jesus' name because we know, Lord, biblically, biblically, you have some things prophetic that's going to take place. So we thank you for that now in Jesus' name. I pray also, Father, for the peoples of the world. Lord, as we pray for the peoples of the world, I bring specifically the nation of Lebanon. I bring before you, Lord, even those, of oh God, who are in Europe and the Americas, but even for Lebanon, even in their crises right now, Lord, so many things that they have to deal with. I pray, Father, that they will, that answers, oh God, I pray, Father, for a moving of your spirit, for a great revival to take place, in particular for Pastor Saeed Deeb in this area and that church, the Lord, we pray this. We pray for the nations, 
of Europe, O oh God. Many, Lord, who have turned their back on you will turn back to you. We pray for revival to take place in Europe. We pray for revival to take place in the Americas, O oh God. South America, North America, and especially right now with what's happening with the pandemic. Lord, how many nations have been locked down, locked in, and we realize even those who have to preach the gospel can't travel. So we pray against that, and we pray, Lord, that the doors will be open for these nations to receive the gospel in Jesus name in Jesus name hallelujah Jesus we pray for all who are watching today that you would touch them I pray, Lord, fire them up, O oh God, with a, an anointing. Fire them up, O oh God, with a new zeal and a new excitement to live for you, to serve you. I pray for your anointing to rest upon them. Maybe it's difficult for some of them to come to the house of the Lord, and Lord, because of lockdown or whatever. But I pray even right now in their homes, you are able to touch them. So I pray that they will receive that touch from you in Jesus' name. And I pray, Father, let no fear come, but let boldness increase in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all the prayer requests that we have received. And Lord, these many that we have here, Lord, before me, I pray in Jesus' name by faith that you would touch, you would meet with their needs. I thank you, Lord, for breakthrough for them. I thank you, Lord, for what you would do. And Lord Jesus, we give you glory as we pray. We know we pray with the, with the full confidence that you hear and that you answer. Jesus, we thank you for what you will do. We thank you for revival. We thank you for repentance. We thank you for renewal. We thank you, Lord, for a restoration that will take place. We thank you, Lord, for this time together. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that we have to call on your name. And Jesus, I pray now for your sons and daughters, for those who are watching, listening, Lord, for the rest of this week, let them engage your God in blessing and seeing your hand move in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you will do. We give you all the praise. We glorify you for what you are doing, what you have done, and what you are about to do in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm sure you're blessed tonight as we heard the word of God, as we took time to pray, as we were in worship. I want to encourage you. Keep on praying. This prayer time or broadcast may, be, may end, but you don't have to end the prayer in your home. You can keep on praying. And as I mentioned earlier, if you need the prayer points to pray in your home, you can do that. We'll send it to you and we will give it to you and you can do that. We also look forward to you joining us. And remember, just to quickly announce that we have our, our worship service that's still live streamed at 9 a.m. on YouTube and Facebook every week and Central African time. And then we also have here for the Family of Good News Center locally, our courtyard praise at 10. And we are having an amazing time. Come and be blessed. We're in the tabernacle. Yes, we have a tabernacle. It's a tent. We're outside. So we're looking forward to great things. So until next time, stay in faith. Stay in the place where you know God is able to undertake for you. Be a blessing to somebody. Share this message. Share this message. This, this prayer time together with somebody and we know God is going to do amazing things. Once again, thank you for joining us. Remember, it's all about Jesus. God bless you. Have a great evening.